Hey, I've got another one on the bench. This one's a little one, a little lightweight one. Actually fits on my desk properly. It's another piece of HP equipment, of course, being the HP fanboy that I am. Um, this is an E611A DC power supply. It's a 0 to 20 volt, uh, yeah, 0 to 20 volts, 1.5 amp, 0 to 35 volt, 0.85 amps. Uh, you can see there, I bought it on Yahoo, Yahoo Auctions Japan, where I buy most of my stuff. And um, yeah, it looks like it'll be, um, assuming it works or we can get it working, it'll be a, a nice, useful little power supply. Nice uh, form factor, not too big, not too small. So um, let's plug this thing in, see if it works, and uh, see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. And then we'll uh, open up and have a look inside, see what we gotta, we've got to do to get it working or keep it working whichever the case may be. Okay, so I'm using my phone here. I'm hand holding it because it's a pain to uh, disconnect the camera and uh, hand hold that. So I'm just using my phone, but let's turn this thing on. It's set to 5.8 volts. What are we getting? 5.9. That's pretty good. Let's wind that right up to the maximum. Thirty-two point four, thirty-two point seven. If we hit the range button, that should drop down. No, forty point one. Ah, it's gone up because it's open circuit voltage. Okay, so let's turn that down. We're on the higher range right now. So fourteen point six, fourteen point eight. So that's pretty good. We're getting voltage. But the next test is I'm going to put a resistor in line and uh, see if it can produce current. Okay, so we're hooked up. We're reading uh, DC amps on, on the uh, 3 amp range because that's all we're going to be able to put out. I'm only putting out a uh, maximum of 1.5 amps. And uh, we've got 4.7 volts at 1 amp, 1.08, and we have got 1.08. If I, uh, I've got this uh, current maxed right out. So um, if I wind the voltage up, then we'll get more voltage and hence more current. And you'll see this light here. It's in constant voltage now. It flicked over to constant current when we hit 1.5. So that looks like it's working quite well. And if I wind that, that's as far as it's going to go. Uh, we're, we've, we're maxing out the output of the uh, power supply. So if we look up here, 1.58. We'll round that up to 1.58. That's looking pretty good. Or well, 1.57 now. 1.57 looking pretty good looks like it's winding itself down a little bit because of the maybe it's warming up and whatnot so if I turn the uh, voltage right down again and I hit the range button now we're in the uh, 0 to 35 volts 0 0.85 amp we've hit the max there already 0 0.89 0 0.89 so I was looking like it works pretty good thumbs up nice score all right uh, let's open it up and see what's inside okay so to get this thing open I think it's just clips you can see little divots there 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 and there and the same on the bottom there's no actual screws anywhere there's four holes there but they're not actually screws they're just like dense and it must be part of the molding holding the circuit board or something so I think we're going to have to pop the front and the back off. They just seem to pull out. I'm not sure about the uh, terminals. But if I get a flathead screwdriver and just carefully, yeah, like that. And like that, so that's one end. That looks like it. We are in like Flynn. So, big stonkin power transformer there couple of electrolytics they are Nichicons nice good quality caps 
there are what from what I can see there are no reefer capacitors bonus that's even better often around the uh, input side you'll see these reefer capacitors which are like they're like a clear kind of cubic sort of shaped capacitor and they get cracks in them the uh, epoxy which is an encapsulation which you know forms the body the shell of the uh, capacity it cracks humidity and whatnot gets in soaks in the uh, aluminium uh, like foil inside that forms the actual capacitor itself corrodes and uh, you end up with them smoking up or even uh, catching fire they're bad news when they get this old they are fine when they're new, but when it comes to like 20, 30 years later, they're no good. You've got to pull them out and replace them. And uh, a lot of old equipment like this has those in. The, the highest count that I've had was a, um, a 50 megahertz. It was a HP 50 megahertz pulse generator. And it had something like 10 or 15 of these reefer capacitors in it. It was ridiculous. But um, yeah, this one, I can't see any in there at all. I don't know if I... I'm looking under the... Uh, Try to look under the uh, tra the uh, transformer there, but nothing at all, which is awesome. This might have nothing wrong with it. Looks like we got a few um, trim pots for uh, calibration, which I might give that a tweak. Not arbitrarily, of course, but I'll um, I'll hook it up as it says in the instructions. So we've got the main transformer there. Smooth output smoothing uh, capacitors. That would probably be a bridge rectifier underneath that heatsink, uh, like a flat kind of square uh, thing there. They're probably our transistors, transistors for the uh, LM or oh, LM three four O TS and a uh, 7912 oh that's a that's a 12 volt voltage regulator of course that'll be powering the um the control circuitry you got the uh, um, op amps here um, which will be doing the feedback making sure that what you set is what is output nice movs here on the output big chunkers there that's good and it looks like this one here 0 0.2 ohm that'll be our current sensing resistor there and we've got a um, front panel board from some surface mount gear for driving the um, LED display and a couple of uh, trim pots there as well for some sort of calibration of the display output. So, oh, this one here, LM340T12. So we've got two of those there. Little bridge rectifier hiding up there. That's probably for the control circuitry as well, whereas this is probably the bridge rectifier for the actual power circuitry. Like the power output. There's our switching transformers, uh, switching transistors. Burr, right in front of my face. Big chunky things there. TO3, uh, TO3 packages. 2N6056 motor rollers. HP uses a lot of motor roller parts. So, um, yeah, of course, they're going to be on the big heatsink at the back. <laughs> You're probably screaming at me, telling me that they're there. So, yeah. That is looking pretty good. So, I think what I'm going to do, give it a performance test and uh, see if I can get this thing within spec. 10k and 50k borns, um, 10 turn pots on the front there. N nice wire wound they are. Wire wound 10 turns. You can hear the yeah, sound. That's the wiper going over the coils. So there's not much else to say about this thing. I'll give it a performance test. And uh, if there's anything that funny happens, um, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know. And uh, we'll be back once I've finished tweaking it away. It's a bit boring to, you know, I could make a video of two hours long of tweaking this and measuring that and tweaking this and measuring that. But I won't put you through that. I'll come back once it's done and um, let you know how close I've got it to, um, to spec. So to do the calibration, you will need a few resistors. Uh, the actual base calibration, you're going to need a 0.1 ohm, 0.1% uh, 10 watt resistor. A uh, little bit expensive, can be a little bit hard to find in a 0.1%, but I have uh, built one here out of, uh, these are, I think these are 2 watt or 3 watt 1% resistors, uh, 1 ohm, and I've got 10 of them all lined up in parallel. So that's given me uh, 0.1 ohm, and I'm hoping that with a 
the uh, tolerances, you know, sum up, sum down, it'll kind of all average out to be pretty much spot on. So we'll measure that in a sec. And also to do the performance test, which not the calibration, you need this one for the calibration. You need both of these for the performance test. This is um, a 13.3 ohm resistor. Well, that's what you need according to the specs in the, uh, the manual. For the uh, E3611A, the other two models you need uh, different different values, but you can find that in the uh, in the actual uh, manual. it tell you what resistors you need. Um, they need to be a 50 watt 13.3 uh, ohm. So I've got three 20 watt resistors at 39 ohm. In parallel, that gives me about 13.1 ish or 13.2 or something. It's not quite spot on, but it's it's pretty close. So I've got my uh, four leads here because my multimeter is a four wire measurement uh, capable. So I can actually do really accurate measurements. So let's hook this up, and I'll get my phone out, and uh, we can. Uh, see what this one actually comes to. So we're measuring about where we're going to be clamping on. And right there, 13.15. We need 13.3 ohms. 1% uh, I think it was. But that's going to be close enough. I mean, for checking if the, the, the unit works, you don't need to be super precise. Uh, that's close enough. Um, we're not doing any calibration. We're just seeing if it actually works properly. So we're not referencing anything in particular. And uh, for the... Uh, our uh, current shunt, this is uh, what's being used to measure how much current this thing puts out so you can calibrate what it says on the display and what it puts out to what the real world is. So um, we need that to be pretty accurate. Um, I'll measure this one up, hook that up there with a four wire. And on the display, 0.1005-ish, that's pretty good. I'm going to be happy with that. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. That is well within uh, spec. That's settling down a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Exact. That's just, um, it's probably cooling down a little bit. I've been handling it, so it's going to um, change as it warms up and cools down. These are actually uh, 50 ppm uh, temperature coefficients, so they're actually very accurate for their uh, the temperature drift. They don't drift very much. Um, not perfect, but they are good enough for the for what we need it for. This power supply has only got like uh, two decimal places or something on the voltage anyway, so um, the accuracy that this has got is uh, is fine. It's going to be giving us better um, readings than what this can actually display on its front panel. So I'll go ahead and uh, do the normal calibration and checks as in the uh, the service manual, which you can download from uh, HP or from Keysight, Agilent, whoever they are called these days. And uh, you can run through that yourself. But that's basically how I made the resistors. The other, if you have a different um, voltage output, a different model of uh, power supply, you can uh, do the same thing to make whatever um, resistor you need. All right, I'm ready to test this thing. I've uh, done the calibration with my current shunt here that I made. Worked out really well. And I've got a really nice uh, test cable which I've made. These are just some Pomona low EMF cables. They're low EMF so they don't create too much interference. Uh, the, the copper and the whatever they use to make these things is um, designed so that you don't get any kind of, I don't know what's called, uh, thermoelectric effects or anything so that the um, you don't get much interference at all right down the millivolt range. So we'll plug those in there. I've also... Um, Put a shield and some braid on the outside there. So um, that comes through to the earth wire there, the ground. And we can uh, ground that in there. So we get in as a direct connection as possible with minimal interference. So if I crank that up a little bit. 6.7 volts, 6.7 volts. Let's go up a little bit randomly, a little bit more. 10.8. 10.8 it's looking pretty good 15.7 15.7 it's looking spot on 20.5 20.48 20 20.5 right up at the top 33.3 33.4 spot on 20 uh, 33.3 there 33.4 33.4 pretty close anyway 33.36 it's still warming up, so it's a little bit of drift at the moment, but that's all right. We are 
still a bang on there. So that's the voltage. Is happy days. So let's see what the current says. I've got a uh, four ohm resistor, so I'm going to put that across the uh, power supply, and then I'll measure the current flowing through it. So I need. Let's, what do we got here? That one goes from there to there. From there. We can... Oops, wrong one. Um, we'll go in there. And I need one more cable coming from... I'll just use one from here. Coming to there Whoop. like that now if I ramp the current up and I've got to put this on the right range as well uh, 10 amp terminals okay there we go 0 0.85 0 0.843 pretty close 1.19, 1.184, we're like, what, <laughs> a tiny little bit low, but that's still pretty good. 1.6 amps, 1.59 amps, 1.61, 1.59, that is good to go. Pretty much bang on, good enough, good enough for me anyway. So there's one more modification which I'm going to do. It turns out that these power supplies actually um, come with a few different terminal configurations. You can see this is red, red, black. So it's red for positive, red for negative, black for ground. I don't like that. I prefer having red for positive, black for negative, green for ground. So it turns out you can get a green terminal. You used to be able to get the uh, red and black as well, but it seems like they've somehow sold out. No one sells the red and blacks anymore, but that's right because you can get the you can get green and blue still, like on eBay and uh, and whatnot. So I bought a green one. That's going to go there, and then the black is going to move across to there, and I have a spare red one left over. So it'll be red, black, green, perfect. And by the power of YouTube, we've got it done. Green on ground. Black on negative, red on positive, beautiful and colourful. And we've got a spare red one which will go in the parts bin for a future restoration or repair. All good. So that's done. Enthusiastic thumbs up for me for getting that all spot on. And uh, that's it for this video. So hope you enjoyed that. Hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.